let's see. I've been working on my diction. So, um, let's give this a shot. Three Wise... No, 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 no. Three Wise Radio. So where did you go? A Regal 14. That's not an IMAX. That's like a big exactly. screen or something. IMAX. But it's the biggest screen that I can get right now while the IMAX is being douchey. Did they... Are they remodeling again? Still closed. I thought... Didn't we go see something there? And they were open right before I left. Yeah, Last... they shut down after you left. Oh, again? I see Wonder Woman in IMAX. Yeah. I saw it in Limax. Last thing we saw was, I think, Civil War. That's why I'm leaving the state to see Justice League. I ain't taking no chances. Where are you going to get an IMAX? Going to Houston with Charlie. Oh, that's right. Um, Science Center Omnimax has Dunkirk. I'm half tempted to go see it because I want to see what it's like wrapped around me. Do it. You know what? It might work in that. You're like, where's the fucking plane? Right? Yeah. Like, the, <laughs> See, like you're inside the actual shit. And that like, actually might work. Yeah, and it comes out like the day it comes out. Like this isn't like a three week later type scenario. Except for the fact that when you see it, you can also always like whenever I would watch them there, you can also see like the beams in the background and like yeah, this, it's not really taught. Maybe that's what we should do for Dunkirk as a joking review. I want to see Dunkirk. I do too. You see it in, in Omnimax. One of us sees it in IMAX, and then one of us sees it in regular. Okay. I don't know. It's a stupid gimmick that means absolutely nothing. But it'd be a very interesting... Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'm not sure that that would merit a review in and of itself for what we do. No, but it'd be a good short segment on an episode, I think. Right. All right. Okay, so we'll look forward to that. All right, here we go. Welcome to Three Wise Radio, a podcast where we talk about movies, video games, comic books, TV, technology, the internet, and pretty much everything else media related. My name is Joe Greller. I am joined as usual by Garrett Welker and Sam Pixley. How are you this week, guys? Doing great, Joe. Smooth as silk. Smooth as silk, you say, Sam. I think that's a spider silk, one might say. Yeah, smooth as spider silk. I'm not quite sure what that means, but all right. Spider-Man means silk. Spider-Man means Spider-Silk. Sure, I I understand. All right, anyway, let's get into the show this week. Uh, We're going to be talking a little bit about Spider-Man Homecoming, as well as looking at his rogues gallery this week for our review of Spider-Man. And it is Spider-Man related, so look forward to that. But first and foremost, some headlines, starting with, well, it seems like now our weekly update on Matt Reeves' The Batman. Recently, he spoke about the possibility of the upcoming DC film serving as the start of a trilogy centered around The Dark Knight. He told Fandango, I have ideas about an arc, but really, the important thing is just to start. You have to start with one. All this, of course, is coming out as Reeves is gearing gearing up on the press tour for War of Planet of the Apes, which will be out next week. Yeah. Putting the cart before the horse here, or what are your first impressions on looking at an old Ben Affleck in a Dark Knight trilogy of his own? I'm okay with it. I'm so on board with it. I don't think it's. I don't think it's putting the cart before the horse, though. I mean, he said like, I would like to. To me, that that says I would. I want to do a trilogy, but I need to make sure this first movie gets off first. So like, he's he's. To me, it seems like he's planning for a good solo standalone film and they can build off of that then yeah that works for me the only thing i don't want is little tiny story plots left open like oh man these three scenes were clearly meant for something that's going to be done in the second installment or the third installment once you get to that and you don't worry about just telling a good story that's where the superhero movies start to lose me is when you're laying too many pieces for the future instead of i'm okay with world building but when it's clearly this is a plot device that's going to come back in act three it's a yeah. little much when we're dealing also with other heroes and their franchises and all together in one franchise and it's too much i mean the best usually sequels go really well when there wasn't necessarily an intended sequel yeah Correct. There was a reason to continue the story, but it wasn't put forth in the original film. Yeah, And if you're going to have something, it's just you don't even need a secondary like take time. If you've if you've crafted an interesting enough world and an interesting enough character. 
other ideas will will follow because of the depth. So you don't even need a teaser or a like post credit scene of what's coming next. Like take the year that you're supposed to take to figure it out. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you can do that with Ben Affleck. <laughs> Silly. Also, he's got enough shit going on in his personal life. Yikes. There's I fought, I keep tabs on him because he is the Batman. Whew. And that guy's just got a lot going on now. What does yeah. he have going on? Well, there's the separation with Jen Garner, and yeah. now there's rumors that he was cheating on her, and him being an al- potential alcoholic, and oh, I thought there was new stuff. This stuff's been going for like three the to four one, years. The one with him cheating is new. I thought he slept with a nanny, and they found this out like before Batman vs Superman. This is a different lady. A different nanny. No, oh. just a lady. Just not a lady. Nanny. So not the, all nannies are ladies. So, there, but most so you're saying there were multiple ladies. Like, no. Switch that. <laughs> Could have been. I mean, he's Ben Affleck. (laughs) All right. In other news, Hulu is looking to become your next cable subscriber, as we talked about Hulu Live coming your way soon. Uh, Hulu subscribers can now add HBO and Cinemax to that service for an additional cost. HBO is available on Hulu for $15 a month, the same price as HBO Now. And you can add Cinemax for just $10 a month. All this news coming with Game of Thrones debuting in just two weeks. Now, unlike HBO Now, your Hulu Plus will feature the live channels of HBO2, HBO Family, and HBO Latino. So. Bye love hbo family do you really because it's just so wholesome all right um no i just it's just getting more and more into hulu trying to be your online on the go a la carte cable service in my personal opinion and also can't you just do hbo go without any kind of connection that's why i said hbo now right so what's the what's the difference between hbo now and hbo go hbo go is if you have an hbo account through your cable service provider Oh, I guess it does ask me who my provider is. That's you know what that's then that's a good reason. Actually, that makes sense, man. When I move out of this place coming up here in two months, I'm not doing cable. I'm so excited to not do it. Have you decided on who will get your business? Who will get my business? Yes, who uh, will get your streaming I'll, business? I will switch. I'll keep Netflix. I'll do Hulu if this is the if this is the way to go about it. I'll do Hulu, and then I'll also do. I'm going to try the. I know uh, Brian from Good Bad or Bad Bad does PlayStation. The, oh yeah, yeah. The, you're telling me about that. What's it called? View or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're able to do that, so I'll be able to get my sports from that. Hey, there you I'm go. I'm so there excited. Go. Now I just gotta make it happen. There you go. Never been more excited. In, it's the future. It is the future. Speaking of the future, Hellboy reboot is coming in the future sometime soon. Hellboy: Rise of the Blood Queen is now looking towards Lionsgate, the movie which begins filming in September, does not have a distributor yet, and apparently Lionsgate, who put out the last one, the uh, Hellboy 2, the Golden Army, is looking to up the ante. And uh, what? Put out the first one, too. Did they? I didn't know if they put out the first one. Um, But anyway, they are looking to put down a hefty amount of money to try and distribute the film because it is not a guarantee that it will go to Lionsgate. This is coming from The Wrap this week. Honestly, thinking about it, though, I think a Hellboy reboot is a risky move in in terms of somebody. Well, I mean, I guess distributors aren't that financially. I don't know that I don't know, like levels of financial attachment to products. But I think Hellboy is kind of a risky play. The more you think of like I'm excited for it. But in terms of like broad appeal and what expectations are now for comic books, I mean, yeah, yeah, you can get excited about the Logan idea, but you also have Hugh Jackman that just draws people in regardless you don't really have that with this, so I'm excited about it, but the more you think about it, the more it does seem like a risky play for anybody that gets involved. That is an excellent point. Sam, how is Pokemon Go out there in Chicago? It's great. It it's is great. great. And how, I can never say it, is it Nanny Tech? Nan- Nanitech? Uh, Niantic? Niantic? Nanny Tech. Think gigantic, just without the Gs. Well, why didn't they call themselves gigantic? Nantic Labs, anyway, has shared new details on Pokemon Go's one-year anniversary event, which has kicked off earlier this week. From July 6th through July 24th, uh, 3 p.m. Central, which is when most of our listeners' time zone there. And uh, during that time, you can get special raid passes, Ultra Balls, Incubators, and Max Revives, all this, including Ash Kutchum's... <laughs> Iconic hat. Catch him? Oh my god. It's so clear that you do not play Pokemon Go. 
No, and nor do I care. Do, I'm doing this for you. Doing it for me? Good. Then let me put this out to everybody. Don't buy the anniversary box because it's a joke and it ain't worth your money. It's not. Spend it on incubators and raid passes like a real player and don't worry about the other stuff because you get that just by spinning. If you don't know what I'm talking about, good for you. If you do know what I'm talking about, just listen to me. Hopefully you're smart enough not to buy the anniversary box. Yeah. So complete gimmick. So they're not really doing anything to help yeah, the actual it's, player. It's... it's uh, like, not this time. Usually their events are pretty good, but this one's a little bit disappointing. But keep in mind that it's a whole like summer long event. There's like lots of different things happening. So yeah, this was just a smaller thing that they threw in. Makes sense. In sequel news, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them sequel has completely gone back on their original word, stating that it will be a brand new uh, movie and instead say that it's only going to pick up six months after the events of the first one. A press release for the upcoming untitled sequel, though, for the film reveals that the film will be set in 1927, just a few months after Newt captured the dark wizard Grendenwald. Johnny Depp. He captured Johnny Depp. Once again, Harry Potter's another realm that I am not well-versed in. However, if you want to listen to our review, it's in the 50s, and I highly recommend that because we said it was fairly good for what it was. Anywho... Here is the actual plot synopsis. The one and only who might be able to stop him is the wizard he once called his dearest friend, Albus Dumbledore, played by Jude Law. Uh, But Dumbledore will need help from the wizard who had thwarted Grindelwald once before, his former student, Newt Scamander. The adventure reunites Newt with Tina, Queenie, and Jacob, but his mission will also test their loyalties as they face new perils in increasingly dangerous and divided wizarding worlds. Ezra Miller is also back as that, like creepy kid misty creepy kid thing obscurial obscures obscures yeah so this is kind of disappointing it sounded like we were getting uh a new decade or what's up it almost seemed like we were kind of getting like an anthology but they were all still kind of like semi-related right and now instead it just sounds like we are getting the same movie part two which is very disappointing I mean, it is the same movie part two. It's picking up literally a few months after the first one. And yeah, I, mean, I wasn't disagreeing with that. I was just, I'm not opposed to it. I'm that just, one was successful and made money. So yeah. this makes sense. It, but it doesn't to me because this is exactly, this was the exact opposite of what you said it was going to be. Yeah. I, basically, just in my opinion, you should, they should be called out on their bullshit. If you said that you had this five arc story planned out and didn't do anything for it, then... What, what was the point of it? What, what was the whole point of the first film? Why did we have this first film to set up this this story now that this is the actual story I guess people wanted to see? So what was what did I watch? November? It was to set up the story. But did we need it then? Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it seemed like nothing happened now because we're not really advancing in time. We're just picking up three months to six months after the previous one. Why not just start here? Because this is where Dumbledore comes in. This is where, I mean, we still have all the same characters. It's not like anything was really like an underlying ground. Like, I don't know, man. It feels very money making. it It feels dirty. This is all fresh ground. I mean, that's how it was with the first movie. Like, I'm sure they'll find some way to make it work. This makes me scared that it, by the fifth one, there will be a Harry Potter thing. Like, they'll be racing to save a child from getting a scar or something. Like, that's oh, exactly sure. what this makes me fearful of. Probably. And the last one will end the way the first one started. Hagrid riding in on a motorcycle. Yep. I bet. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be shocked at all. Makes sense. And that doesn't turn you off? I didn't see the first one. I don't care. There's beasts. I just don't get what they're going to be called. Moving on. Not the most interesting take, but I, you can't. Huh? In other news, Disneyland is changing up a major scene in Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Uh, Disney theme parks are now taking away the auction. So the auction block in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. I don't know when's the last time you guys wrote it, but I do remember this scene. It says auction take a wench for a bride and now it will be replaced with scenes of villagers lining up to surrender their valuables and the sign will be replaced to read auction surrender ye loot this is not the first time that the pirates of the caribbean ride has changed uh there was once a 
a redheaded woman who was up for the auction. Now that has gone away as well. Then there was also back in 1997 scenes depicting pirates chasing a woman that was altered to show them chasing a woman carrying trays of food. Also in 2006, characters from the actual movie were added to the film as well. Changing up iconic rides, good or bad? I mean, I get it. It makes sense. You want to you want to be uh, politically correct, but I'm I'm positive that pirates raped women. <laughs> yeah, but I've never been more sure of anything in my life. I love my dog, and pirates most assuredly raped women. <laughs> so I, I I mean I don't get. I mean, I guess you don't want little girls to be riding through Pirates of the Caribbean and see big busty ladies being auctioned off, off, I guess. But then that's your job as a parent to be like, pirates are not great. Yeah, <laughs> like, pirates are not fine great because he's Johnny Depp and he's got a heart of gold, even though he doesn't. No, he doesn't. And the movies aren't great. I just, at some point, children have to be aware that there are good people and bad people in the world. And we're better to do it than at the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. I can think of many different places better to do it. None better. So also, side note, with them adding, have already added characters from the Pirates of the Caribbean film, are we glad that the Haunted Mansion didn't take off so there's not like Eddie Murphy's flying around the Haunted Mansion? Is he not? No, he is not. Have you heard the the stories, the ghost stories? Of his career dying there? No, I have not. They actually hired him and he's there. (laughs) Speaking of Disney in Star Wars news, an R2-D2 unit made out of original parts from the first five Star Wars films has sold for $2.7 million. Entertainment Weekly confirmed the sale via a California-based auction house, and this is as close as you can get to owning an original R2-D2. The R2 unit, which is made out of aluminum, steel, and fiberglass elements, was assembled from R2 units featured in A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Phantom Menace, and Attack of the Clones. So you can't own the original R2-D2 unit, but you can own the hodgepodge Frankenstein's monster that is this for almost three million. Ugh. Good or bad? Bad. And what bad. does it do? I would not pay three million for anything like that. I would pay three million for it if the bottom plate had Kenny Baker's like footprints in it. From I thought where you were going to say his corpse, and I got really scared. Not his corpse. <laughs> he, he's dead. Yeah. Yeah, he died. Uh, yeah, if they had like his little, his little, little footy prints in there so that you knew it was legit. So you knew yeah. that it was 3 million. So you knew that Kenny Baker once stood here. Oh, he died last year. Yeah, he did. That's why I said that. Yes. He was old though. Yes, he was. Oh, not really. Oh no. Yeah, he was. He was like in his seventies, wasn't he? 1934. You do the math. No, he was in his eighties. There you go. Even older than you thought. Our last headline comes from the CW's universe i now will watch certain episodes of supergirl going forward because entertainment weekly has released that smallville alum erica durance has joined the cast of the cw series replacing a major character she will now be playing alora who is the mother of kara in the series if you are a little confused by that that's because well, there actually was an actress already playing Olora and Astra, who was the main villain of season one. But Laura, which is the person's actual name, so Laura was playing Alora. Sure. Follow me on that. Uh, is actually a Broadway actress and will no longer have time to devote duties to Supergirl. Supergirl does return Monday, October 9th on the CW. What is your reaction anytime you cast a or recast a major role in a television series? Does it does it off put you? Does it throw you off, or are you you fine with it? It is rarely a good sign unless it's done incredibly early, which I guess for them this is incredibly early. What constitutes incredibly early? Season one, end of season one. Well, we're going into season three, so too late by now. We- oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Is this just been going on two seasons? Yes. Oh, whoopsie daisy. <laughs> it's too late. All is lost. Okay. <laughs> They've lost me as a viewer, I'll tell you that. Apparently. You didn't even know there was... You, you know this used to be on CBS, right? Very funny. No, that's TBS. <laughs> <laughs> Which one's CBS? Are you serious right now? What's the slogan for that? Television for old people? I don't know. <laughs> TVOP? TVOP. There you go. 
Actually, that's not bad. <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming coming up next. I think that went really well, that last bit. Hi, my name is uh, Three Wise Radio. Hi, Three Wise Radio. Spider-Man Homecoming is in theaters now, opening number one at the box office, raking in more money than we anticipated, even though we anticipated a boatload of money. Ferry load of money, guys, perhaps? Hmm? Hmm? Is that he? It's looking at, what, 117? Yeah, and they were only predicting 110 max, so. Get it. It's uh, it's doing well. So anyway, with the Kevster talking earlier in the week before Spider-Man Homecoming debuted, saying they want to keep the trend up of not recycling villains in the Spider-Man film. Now, there are three villains of notable of note from the rogues gallery in this film, and we've seen other villains from the rogues gallery in previous films so we thought we'd brainstorm who could potentially be the big bad for the second spider-man homecoming film franchise probably titled spider-man prom no that'd have to be the third one because he'd be a prom senior coming. prom you coming go to prom as a junior joe you can go to junior prom yeah but i think if you do spider-man junior prom and then spider-man senior prom that's a little bit too on the nose <laughs> fair enough uh, Spider-Man Junior Ring? Hmm? Don't you get your ring junior year? I have no idea. I never got mine. My ring was my junior year. Anyway, uh, so anyway, the second installment in the Spider-Man franchise with the MCU. Off the top of your head, guys, before we delve into this, what major... Vi- obviously, Sam Mysterio. So, But what uh-huh. major villain do you really want to see? Because in my mind, there's two probably that we're going to come to. <laughs> the most sense and we can all i think we've all unfortunately talked about this fair enough craven yes craven would be great and i think this plays really well i think he plays really well into the universe where it's at right now but i think not second move not second movie i think third movie craven because for third I movie i think so what? i think because you get to a point where he's very successful comfortable into himself and you could also similarly to unfortunately they do play on the avengers a lot in this movie and I think that might be an interesting thing where maybe the Cr- Craven's goal is to start hunting Avengers and you would start at the lowest rung in the totem pole with Spider-Man. All right. That's a, I do like that. I do like that theory. Now, one, now one villain that we'll probably never see in this franchise is Norman Osborn to a certain extent because they're trying to avoid, as they've said in previous interviews, Re- rehashing the same storyline that they've done for the last two franchises. I think that we will still see Norman Osborn. I don't think he'll really be a big player until like later installments. I mean, you don't know how many movies this kid's going to get. True, true. Also, but, I mean, there's some... I, uh, go ahead, Garrett. I, was gonna say, I think they'll save him for at least movie three. Now, there is something I want to point out, which I think is pretty cool. Spider-Man is in high school in these movies, and we don't really know Peter Parker in high school when it comes to the comic books. He was only in high school for the first, I think, 17 issues, maybe 20. I'm trying to think when he actually graduated from high school. But it wasn't more than two years of him actually being in high school. And some of the major villains in this film are Vulture and Tinkerer, who debuted in Spider-Man number two. So they are trying to stay a little bit more uh, a little bit more grounded with the actual storyline of guys that he originally met while in high school. And one person I think who would be great for the sequel is Chameleon. The man who was in the very first ever Amazing Spider-Man comic book could look like anybody, really mess with them at all times. And as we saw Peter kind of building his world you could see that the chameleon you could just cast as anybody and boom, there's your guy. Fair, I just don't think he's very... I th- I feel like he'd be like a secondary villain in yeah. the Craven movie. Agreed. Since they're brothers. Oh, so you don't fight him. What do you mean you don't fight him? Be like, I knew it was you. That like He fits really well into those comics because there's at some point he, he, Spider-Man bonks him on the head and he's like, I knew you weren't that person. <laughs> you are the chameleon. He's like he, he trades punches with him all the time. He's a master assassin. Is the man, assassin? the man is good at combat. Yeah. What kind of combat? We talking close quarters combat? Sure. <laughs> We're talking hand to hand. I mean, I suppose they they could make it work, but I don't think he'd 
be a yeah i don't that like i don't think he him going toe to toe with him that i don't think you see anything interesting there you see a man with a knife like i think that's what's compelling about craven is that he will like shoot him from quite far away and he's also got the strength to somewhat combat him okay so we've talked about that now what about someone along the lines of the molten man mark ronson mark raxon no no you don't like a man on fire being your main villain i mean i don't I don't think that's – there's other bigger players to go through. Yeah. I just I just don't think the Molten Man's a big enough name, especially like, – that'd be like one – again, just another throwaway secondary and maybe third tier villain in a movie. Okay. Then along the lines of Hydro Man or does he go along your same uh, throwaway? I feel like Hydro Man would be a, a relatively good uh, – that. but the thing with Hydro Man is – once you introduce him, that's where you kind of start slipping into the the clone conspiracy, and then that's a whole whole can of worms that we don't want in a movie franchise right now. So we're not really left with as many people as we thought. What about someone along the lines of Smythe and the Spider Slayers? Maybe even also getting an appearance from uh, Vincent from D'Onofrio Kingpin. doing the Kingpin as well as we go into this area. I mean, I'm okay with the Spider Slayers. Like, I think that makes sense that, like... I think he's also not big enough for that yet for like for them to do some kind of incorporated where there's like a task force against him. And yeah, I feel like, like that's that. a that's a post Craven pre Osborne thing. So what I would really like to see, though, unfortunately, you can't do it without Osborne is I'd like to see a hobgoblin Ooh. like a pure hob, like a, a an actual hobgoblin. So just a crazier green goblin. A crazier green goblin that becomes obsessed with like the goblin mythos and wants to make his own make his own thing and then. I think he's just an interesting character because so many people like he's one of the biggest villains that honestly, like there's a lot of people that have his mantle and you're okay with all of them doing it because it's more of a moniker than like an individual person. And they're all like killing each other all the time. Yeah. Like they're almost fighting each other more than they are (laughs) Spider-Man. True. What about this? I know we kind of joked about it when we had our Michael Bay segment, but like I would love Michael Bay as Mysterio. (laughs) The casting for Mysterio is Bill Hader. <laughs> Actually, I could see that. That would be good. Also, be great. You damn right. That would be good. Who would you cast as Craven the Hunter? Because I feel like now we're down to those two guys. Because anyone we name is going to have to be a secondary villain to a certain extent. Like you can have a hammerhead and maybe have vibranium in his head instead of animantium, but. I feel like he would just be another crime boss kind of as a, as a secondary tier character. So I think now we are just down to Craven and Mysterio. I feel like we could they could introduce Black Cat properly in one of these movies. And I feel like that'd be like a really interesting dynamic. You just like especially if she's older than Peter and just have her be like a really like kind of temptress esque woman. So would you go him, him as a teenager just like uh uh, how, how do I react to this right now? <laughs> so you would go full on Ultimate Universe because that was a storyline in the Ultimate Universe is when she's trying to get revenge against Kingpin and she keeps flirting with Spider-Man until she unmasks him and realizes that she's been flirting with a 15-year-old kid. And it also fits in pretty well here too. I don't want to well, – we can't talk about the movie, but I think that actually would pair really well with where we sort of left off. Yeah. I won't get into it, but – I think that actually matches pretty, pretty accurately with what we're going on. I also think that you could still do Rhino and Scorpion, even though Rhino was done. But like that, we're not going to talk that about. Not we're not right. going to talk about that. So I mean, yeah, and technically Black Cat was done as well. Felicia Hardy was in Amazing Spider-Man yeah. too. <laughs> I mean, she was in it as much as Rhino was. True. <laughs> no, uh, but. Answer answer the question though, Sam. Who would you want for Craven the Hunter? Craven. I mean, the the most probably the most popular one is like Joe Manganelli, like a very big, imposing man that looks Ooh. like he's spent some time in the bush. Yeah, actually, that would be a good one. Damn. Um, Think about that. That's a great casting. Yeah, because you could picture him wearing a lion. <laughs> but I mean, interesting. You need someone that looks. Like, you can't do, like, a really big jacked guy because you want someone that looks fast. It looks very quick, very Sink. agile. So, like, I think he kind of fits that bill based on all the Magic Mike scenes that I've seen him in. 
Very true. What about if there is no big bad with superpowers? Instead, we do see more of a gang war for the sequel where we get a tombstone, hammerhead, um, silver mane, all vying for ground around New York. Because that is something that would be underneath the Avengers and something that Spider-Man would kind of have to step in on and would seem a little bit big for him. Yes, but I also don't feel like as a general moviegoer that would draw me in. It's Spider-Man. All they have to say is Spider-Man, and I'm drawn in. I feel like that's majority of the people. This movie has Spider-Man in it? Okay, here's my money. I don't think there's ever been a villain that I'm going to see in a Spider-Man film. Actually, Goblin may be the closest one. If I saw Goblin again, I would be kind of turned off by this point, because we've done it so many times, and that is an overarching villain that when I hear Goblin, I'm thinking... There's no way you're going to tell this properly in two hours. You're going to cram something down our throat, and it's going to get... Not without Willem Dafoe. No. <laughs> oh, I did just see a great casting recommendation for Chameleon. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, he's busy in the Marvel Universe. Paul Bettany. Oh, that would have been a good one. Yeah. That'd be real good. That's a real damn shame. Uh, going into the supernatural, would we ever want to see Manwolf or Morbius? Morbius, yes. Yeah. Do you, you want to do Morbius without Blade? Like, I feel like if you if you introduce Morbius into the MCU through a Spider-Man movie, you then have at some point have to or have there's to got Blade, like have to do Blade. Series. There's going to be a mention of Blade like. To- yeah, I think I think what you do is if you I mean, that's us. We're getting very situational here, but I well, think you get to a point where maybe you do do Morbius and it's with Spider-Man. It's always either a science or a suit thing where he's scientifically something happened where he scientifically has shown the signs of being a vampire. And that's what we all assume it is. And then it comes up to a build up to a build up to a build up of, of Peter thinking he's figured out the antidote or whatever, whatever, whatever. And then he finally attempts it and he's like, no, this is just a, Oh, this is just a vampire. And like this world exists. And that opens up almost like a dark, like a dark Marvel where you could introduce like a blade or things like that. But that gets, I think that gets very, that's very specific, but I think that'd be really cool. I just imagined how, whenever we saw the mummy and like, there was like universal and then it was like dark, dark universe, universe. And was, like Marvel, dark Marvel. Well, that's kind of what the DC <laughs> is kind of doing with their like justice league dark. So it's not, it's not the first time. And I feel like, okay. So we we're thinking that, it's either going to be Mysterio or Craven the Hunter. How do you line up other minor villains, which they did very successfully in this movie, to work with Mysterio or Craven the Hunter? You do a, I mean, you do a modified Sinister Six, where it's they're not all at the same level, but they're kind of like summer pawns, yeah, getting up to the big to the big game. I could see Mysterio being your main villain, and you have people like. Morbius, Molten Man, Kangaroo, um, Jackal even, or Tarantula. You have these really weird B-list movie names, and you use those villains as his henchmen because he was using other movie sets or other movie characters and tried (laughs) to work those gimmicks in as his underlings. I could see that happening, especially, like I said, with something like Kangaroo. That is a joke of a villain that should not be around. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. I mean, I can see either Craven or Mysterio, if you want to do kind of like the gang war thing, I could see them, either of them manipulating the situation to cause that, to cause enough stress on Peter to put him in a bad place. Yeah, that's, place kind, of, that's kind of like your strike. secondary. I mean, it's easier. It makes more sense for Craven, but for Mysterio to do it, I think if you've got a good script, I think it could be really interesting. If he was like causing situations and making people think that things were going on, which caused a a gang war that wasn't supposed to have happened, and he kind of triggered it to happen while also screwing with Peter mentally throughout, and then it was revealed that it was just just this dude. I think that's always what's most compelling about Spider-Man is that while Peter Parker is also just some dude, his big his a lot of his like mid-tier villains are also just some dude. Yeah. I think for that to be like, oh, you're just a guy that used to be in the movie biz. Weird. Nice helmet. With that also, last bit of topic last with this also, last bit of thought on this topic. What hero then pairs well with a Mysterio or Craven as the villain because they also said we're going to get a brand new team up hero 
in the next installment as well. And think about it. Most of the guys who are in the current Avengers will be out of contract once we get the sequel running. So if you had to cast a secondary hero for this film, who would it be? It just has to be somebody that exists in the universe right now. It doesn't have to be, but... I mean, that would make sense. Hugh Jackman? <laughs> Not Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Not without the goddamn suit. Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like, again, I feel like incorporating Black Cat would be a... Could be a, 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 a nice move. To me, it's Hulk. Hulk is who you have in the next installment, because I feel like Ruffalo will do it still. He's not under the same type of contract that Evans or Downey, and he doesn't really have to make his exit after Infinity War or Infinity Sequel, as I'll tentatively title it. And you could also have that science nerd back and forth that you had with Tony Stark. So there still could be the evolution of Peter's brain growing up while they're still like, calm down, big fella. Like, oh my God, you know, like him trying to calm down the Hulk, which is the funness of half the Spider-Man Hulk dynamic. And when now that he can talk, he's like, funny little bug man. Like their back and forth in the cartoons and the comic books has been great. I just think in terms of scale, that might be kind of hard to do. But yeah. I mean, if you were ever to if you were able to move the Netflix universe in with the big universe, this is the one to do it with. Yeah. The little also, Spidey Daredevil. Also, side note, I just thought of I just stumbled upon the greatest Craven casting. Jason Momoa. Well, they're not gonna do Aqu yes, but they're also not gonna do Aquaman as Yeah. He would be perfect though. To at least uh, where a big exotic looking gentleman. <sighs> to at least to where Joe Manganola may not be Deathstroke anymore. We do know <laughs> that Momoa will be Aquaman for quite some time. That would be Perfect. And hasn't he come out and said, fuck Marvel? Wasn't he one of the ones that said it? Yeah. <laughs> so, he's a go-getter. I feel like he's got too many of deep roots. All right. Well, the Spider-Man Homecoming sequel comes out in 2019, kicking off phase four. So stay tuned to Three Wise Radio for updates on that. Coming up this Saturday, we will be doing an in-depth spoiler review of Spider-Man Homecoming, so be on the lookout for that. Gives you a little bit of a week and a day to see the actual film. See it. Three Wise, I've got your Three Wise Radio. Three Wise. Three Wise, three wise Ice Cold Three Wise Radio. Ice Cold Three Wise. I'll take a three. It's delicious. It's too delicious. Get out of here. Peaking your interest. Bam. As usual, we end every episode with what's piquing our interest, or we just say what's piquing our interest. Garrett, what's piquing your interest this week? Um, man, Spider-Man. Spider-Man's great. Um, Cop but, out. but uh, I am officially, as soon as we are done recording this podcast, going to finally order the uh, the Spider-Man Homecoming hot toy. Oh, and, uh, the homemade suit. So you are an idiot. Falling off the wagon. Says, and with how many? Um, that's why I'm saying it. <laughs> he's, not so. the, he's not the dealer offering the hot toy. He's the cautionary tale of telling you not to get into it. No <laughs> you could become this. <laughs> Sam, what's piquing your interest this week? Oh, Joe, piquing my interest was really sitting in theater today. And because I saw the movie today. And I saw the black panther trailer again for the second time since i watched it i only watched it once i did not get watching, that one what i did I didn't not get that black panther trailer. but watching it in theaters it's gonna be bumping i'm real into that and then i also saw dark tower and the trailer for that is real good so i just had a real good time watching trailers today nothing fancy with my peaked interest but movies coming out are we doing a review of dark tower we are it. yes wait we are. We may have on Mike Reynolds for that one. Um, nice. I know he's a huge fan of the books, so I'd like to get someone who's read all the books and uh, really kind of compare the two. What? He's a fancy boy. I don't need no book learning. Anyway, what's piquing my interest this week is I've been delving back into the Netflix series of Love, starring uh, with the, the Judd Apatow series. Also, I've been watching Scream, the old MTV series based on the actual Scream movies. And it's very interesting at how Scream was adapted to the television show while keeping a lot of the same elements that the movies did, yet 
a completely different storyline whatsoever. It's part of my vow to myself to try and whittle down my Netflix queue. It's really impressive. It's really mm-hmm. good for you, man. Thank you. Also, what is piquing my interest this week is I talked about this off air, but not on air. I have been experimenting with the dating apps again and downloaded the haters app where it lets you hate different things and matches you on how much you hate and like certain things. So it's like you and blank are a 98% match based on the things you like and hate. Of course, 98% is way too high for any actual match. However, I did have someone I matched with that apparently we hated and liked 89% of the same things. It's pretty good. Do you both hate uggos? No. Damn. I am, I think, the only person that hates Game of Thrones, though, on this entire app. Um, But the one thing that I thought was funny is once you, like, go to match with them, you can then click on their profile and scroll through and see all the individual things that they hate and like. Needless to say, even though I am an 89% match with this person, it will not work out because she hates beards, giant beards, and bald men. So, (laughs) yeah. So this woman hates everything. This woman hates everything, including me. So, ladies, if there's any of you out there that do like beards, big beards, and bald men, get on haters.haters.org. Or you can just message us directly, and we'll send you to Joe. Thanks for pimping me out, guys. No problem. His cell phone number is on. Let me pull <laughs> no, but there are things we do like to pimp out, and that is Movie Verses, which comes out every Thursday, and you can check them out. You can also check out Beyond the Blast Doors if you need your Star Wars pod fix, or if you just want to figure out if movies are a good bad or a bad bad, you can check out Good Bad or Bad Bad on YouTube. That's going to do it for us this week. Joining us next week... Join us next week when nice. we dive into possibly the previous Planet of the Apes films. How crazy do we want to get? Do we want to go back to Heston? Do we want to do Wahlberg? Do I don't know, but when I Google hater dating app, the first one that comes up is Naughty Meat. Looking to hook up quick? I don't think that's the right one. Oh God. That's not the one I'm on. Oh God. Perfect. <laughs> We'll, we'll figure this boy, out. Boy. More on this next week. Go real deep. Three Wise Radio! Oh. I'm a man of the Night's Watch. Right, but... I what? haunt things because they I, need to die. I get it, but Kit Harrington isn't speaking thronish, so what you're is he spider, speaking? You're a spider. You're also a man. It shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> so no, no Kit Harrington is Craven the Hunter. <laughs> No Jon Snow is Craven the Hunter. Did they just ruin it? <laughs> like, I was on board with the idea of Kit Harrington as Craven, and then you were just like, ruined it. With a great accent, a great <laughs> that impression. Was great, <laughs> God. Uh, everyone ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> Three Wise Radio is a production of Three Wise Media. For more information, check us out on Facebook. 